Hey guys, this is Scott Leroy, Scott Leroy Marketing, coming in for another weekly update. All right, and today is the week of the 18th, but we're actually going to talk about something that's you know, been out for about a month now, but we haven't done a tip on it quite yet. And it's how to actually add inside Google Analytics to your IDX site. So the cool part about this is it's extremely simple to set this up. That's the best part about this. All right, so the first thing we want to do is figure out what our IDX site URL is. All right, so to find out what that URL is actually set up as, we're going to log into KDB Command, and we're going to click on the site section over here as well. All right, so if we click on site section on here, all right, so I'm going to click on the little site icon. Here we go. All right, this is going to show our landing pages. It's going to show our agent site pages, our neighborhood pages. All right, so if I click on agent site settings up here at the top right, all right, then we can actually see what our subdomain is. So in this case, mine is scottleroymarketing.kdb.com. So if you've gone through, you've done the Kelly guide, you've got the site active, that's what you'll need. All right, you'll need whatever your subdomain is in this case. All right, now with that being said, I'm going to remember the subdomain. All right, and if you want to change it, you can. You can always update this over here. All right, but now that we have it remembered, all right, I'm going to click on our picture up here in our name, and we're going to select the settings section. All right, so I'm going to select settings, that third option down real quick. Now, once I click on settings, this is going to automatically take me over to the back end of our command settings. And what we'll want to do is click on connect settings on the left hand side. And then marketing profile, the only option underneath connect settings on here. Now, this is the information that's going to auto populate on our marketing pieces, on our landing pages. If you notice, it'll also display on your branded agent site. All right, but at the very bottom of this page, right, about right, maybe about two months back, it actually launched on here. You'll be able to see where you can add inside a Facebook pixel. All right, so if you're doing any type of ads or anything on Facebook, you can add that in immediately. And then you also have the Google Analytics ID too. All right, so we can actually add this in. So much like you had over on your Placer site or on your eEdge site or on any custom site, all right, you can add inside that tracking code. So to create that code, we're going to go to google.com slash analytics. All right, so I'm at google.com slash analytics. You will need to sign in with a Gmail account. You can sign in with your kdb.com email if you want to. And this is what the back end of a Google Analytics account would look like if it's set up. All right, so this is what I had previously for the Placer site on here. All right, now obviously the Placer site is not active anymore, so that's why it's showing nothing on here. All right, but at the end of the day, if yours looks just kind of basic like this, fantastic. If not, it'll actually walk you through what I'm about to show you in a second. All right, so if you already have a Google Analytics account set up, maybe for another website, all right, then this is how you can actually update it. And of course, if you logged into Google Analytics for the first time, all right, give me one second, I'm going to show you what your screen will look like. All right, so if I click on this little admin option down here, though, if I already have a Google Analytics account set up, I'm going to click on admin. All right, then this is going to take me to the back end where I can actually start to update this even further. Now, in most cases, all right, if you were logging in for the first time, it's not going to take you here you know, quite yet. All right, but if I click on the Create Account option up here at the top left, so I'm going to click that blue button to create an account. All right, then this is more than likely what you'll probably end up seeing when you first set up a Google Analytics account. All right, so it's going to ask me for the account name on here so I can put this inside. So I'm going to put inside Scott Leroy Marketing IDX site, All right, just to make it something that I can kind of tramp a little bit easier. All right, so then I'm going to ask you about the account data sharing settings on here, what they recommend and whatnot. So I'm just going to leave it as is. All right, you can have a maximum of 100 on here. I already have three accounts. So I'm going to click the Next button, that blue Next option. All right, it's going to say, how do we want to measure? Do we want to measure the web, apps, or apps and web on here? So I'm just going to do the web right now. All right, that's the main one we want to focus on, because right, there's not really an, an app quite yet that I think you can track on here with KW. The new app might have that option, though. All right, so we're going to do web. I'm going to click the next option on here. All right, that's going to ask me for the website name so I can put inside whatever name I prefer. All right, so I'm going to put inside Scott Leroy Marketing IDX site. And then we're going to put inside our website URL. All right, so I'm going to change this to HTTPS. All right, and then I'm going to put inside my URL. All right, so here's my subdomain on here Scott Leroy Marketing .com. I'm going to put inside the industry category on here. There used to be a real estate one. I think they got right. Oh, no, it's here. How about that? It was gone for a while. <laughs> All right. So for the industry category, you can select real estate. If for some reason yours doesn't show it, though, there is a business option up here. So you can't always do business, too. 
And then obviously what your time zone is. So when you're actually looking at the analytics on your website, when people are on your site, the pages they may be going to, all right, what page they left from, how they came over. All right, it's always nice just to have the proper time zone. All right, so I'm Eastern time, so I'm gonna go with New York. All right, so once we click that blue create button, all right, then we're gonna check these boxes for the terms of service. I'll click I accept on here. If this isn't popping up for you and it doesn't give you the scroll option, Remember, if you're on a PC, you can always press that control minus, or if you're on a Mac, I believe it's command minus on your keyboard to zoom out. All right, it looks like it's allowing me to scroll those. This is great, so I click I accept, and fantastic. All right, so now we have our tracking information on here. Now, this is what we want. All right, we want this tracking ID, the UA dash, and then whatever it might be. Now, in some cases on custom sites, you might have to put inside like the site tag on here, or sometimes there's a tag manager and whatnot. All right, in this case, though, we literally just want this. They've made it very simple for you. All right, so if I come back over to Connect Settings now, I can paste in my tracking ID, select Save, and I'm done. That's it. All right, so that's all I have to do in order to add inside the Google Analytics. So now within about 24 to 48 hours, if people are going over to my site, I won't be able to see who's looking at what. All right, but I will, though, be able to actually see what pages are people going to. How do they come to my site? Uh, where are they located? What devices are they using? What web browsers are they using? So this is going to help out tremendously with your marketing. All right, so that way if you notice that more people are on a cell phone or on a mobile device than they are on a desktop or a laptop, all right, then maybe you want to start marketing to people and make sure that everything's mobile optimized. All right? Or you can actually see which pages people are going to the most. All right, typically the home page is number one, but regardless, you can see what other pages are on there too. All right, so if I click that Save button on here, all right, we are all good to go once it saves. All right, we'll be all good to go. Perfect. So now it's officially saved, and that is fantastic. So now within about 24 to 48 hours, as you can see, no data received in the past 48 hours. All right, I'll be able to come back over here. I can go to my home option, and I can actually view this immediately. So then I'll be able to see all the different data coming over to that site. All right, so there you go. So that is your K2B command tip for the day.